Welcome everyone to our talk, Detecting and Quantifying Wash Trading on Decentralized Cryptocurrency Exchanges. Uh, my name is Friedhelm Victor and together with Marie Weintraut, uh, I'm going to walk you through this talk. We're both from Technical University of Berlin. So to start out, uh, what are actually wash trades? So the Commodity Futures Trading Commission in the United States, for example, defines these as transactions that appear to be purchases and sales, but the traders that perform them don't actually incur any market risk or change their market position. So if you look on the right-hand side, the vertices are accounts and the edges are trades. And so, for example, in figure A, uh, account three appears to be uh, trading with himself uh, with 100 assets. Uh, and so this would be an obvious wash trade, and this is usually prevented by self-trade prevention functionality. Um, in figure B, you could have a slightly more complex uh, example where you have three accounts trading in a cycle, and they cycle through 100 units of assets. And so they end up again with no change in their market position. Uh, and then you could have uh, more complicated examples where, uh, for example, this uh, th these trades are split up, uh, or the cycles may even contain sub-cycles, but the takeaway is that uh, always the participants don't change their market position and they don't really incur any, any risk. Now, the motivation to do this is to uh, generate fake trading volume to suggest that there is an active market. This is not legal in the United States, and there are many similar laws in, in other countries, but it's still somewhat questionable for cryptocurrencies. Now, in the cryptocurrency space, there are centralized and decentralized exchanges. For example, Coinbase, Bitfinex, Kraken, and so on are popular centralized exchanges, and they usually act as custodians of user funds. So to trade on them, users have to send their funds to exchange wallets, and then they can trade outside of any blockchain context on these exchanges. This makes these wallets high value targets for attacks, and this is evidenced by numerous cryptocurrency exchange hacks that have happened in the past couple of years. As an alternative, there are decentralized exchanges and there are varying types of decentralization, but the commonality is that they're all usually implemented as smart contracts. This enables users to retain more control of their funds uh, and, for example, withdraw their funds at any given time. Um, finally, there are limit order book decentralized exchanges and automated market makers, and in this particular work, we only look at limit order book decentralized exchanges and specific, specifically IDEX and EtherDelta. If you were to look at how IDEX looks like in terms of its front end, then you would see something like this, which is very similar to a centralized exchange. The interesting thing is the trades window here. So this shows you what trades have happened uh, in the past couple of minutes, hours, days. Uh, and these trades need to be settled on the blockchain, in this case, Ethereum. So we can look up on chain who traded with whom and then we can see uh, these exact trades where, for example, some token has been exchanges to, exchanged against Ether. Uh, and if we look at some more trades, uh, then that allows us to build a trade graph. Um, but as you can see, always one asset is exchanged for another, and um, we simplify this graph to only look at the token flow and ignore the Ether flow, because that's always reciprocative anyway. Um, if we look at a lot of such trades um, over time, then you would expect that a lot of these, these trades are essentially to random participants in the network, um, because by this front end, users don't know who they're trading with. So if you see two participants like these ones in red here that seem to be trading in a cycle very frequently with one another, then that's very suspicious because uh, that, that wouldn't happen under normal con uh, circumstances. So these might be wash trades, but in this work, we want to figure out systematically whether that, that's actually true by the legal definition. Before we get to that in detail, though, let's quickly cover some related work. Um, wash trading has been studied very intensively in traditional finance, of course. One work that's very relevant to ours is the one by Kawada, where they propose to check all subsets of a given trade set, meaning the power set. Uh, but that yields exponential time complexity in terms of uh, you know, what trades have, be, have to be checked. Um, speaking specifically about cryptocurrency wash trading, uh, there are some media reports uh, on, on wash trading in cryptocurrencies. For example, on the right-hand side, uh, you, you have an example of that. Um, there is also a recent work uh, 
that um, focused on centralized exchanges and uh, trying to find out whether there are indicators that uh, you know, um, speak to the likelihood of, of wash trading happening on centralized exchanges, but they don't have uh, a view on the account level data. So they can't look at who traded with whom because that information is not being made available from centralized exchanges. But this is something we can look at on decentralized exchanges and it hasn't been studied there yet, so our work is the first in this realm. Okay, so the question then is, how can we systematically detect such wash trades? And uh, as Friedhelm already mentioned, the brute force approach here uh, would be to check the power set. And this has been proposed in previous work, um, but this is not really feasible for the millions of trades that, that we have in our data set due to this exponential time complexity. So the goal ultimately is to reduce the number of trade sets to check by focusing on candidate groups of traders. And we follow a two-step process where in the first step we try to find such candidate groups. And to do so, if you look again at the right-hand side, the examples of wash trades, you can see that all of these cases involve some sort of cycles in these graphs. And we use this characteristic to identify candidate sets of potentially collusive traders by repeatedly extracting so-called strongly connected components, which contain such cycles from these token trade graphs. And I will explain that more in just a second. And then, uh, because these cycles are not necessarily wash trades, once we have identified potential wash trading candidates, we look at their trades and try to find subsets that conform to the definition of wash trades, which we call trade volume matching. So regarding the first step of account candidate generation, as I've said, we have these, uh, the fact that wash trading are characterized by cycles, but note that this can mean a cycle with several sub-cycles, which is why it is not enough to just look at all cycles in a graph and check whether they constitute a wash trade. Instead, we use this concept of strongly connected components, or SECs for short, which in a directed graph are defined as a maximal subset of vertices such that there exists a directed path from every vertex U to V and from V back to U which basically means that between any two vertices in such a component, you can establish a cycle going back and forth. So a cycle as such, or a component that contains them, can just form incidentally. But what we want to find are groups of traders that repeatedly form the same strongly connected components. So we start with a token trade graph for all trades in a particular token. And then we simplify this graph by turning the number of multi edges into an edge weight. We then retrieve the SECs from this graph, and then in an iterative process in each step, we first decrease the edge weights, eliminating all edges with uh, a weight of zero, and then again, find the SECs in the remaining graph. And we do so until we have no more edges left. So what we end up with is a set of SECs with a count of how often they have appeared during this process. And the count corresponds to the number of circular trades that these sets of accounts have conducted among themselves. And then we choose a threshold of SECs that are particularly suspicious due to their, um, well, because they appear repetitively. And in our paper, we chose those SECs that appeared at least 100 times, indicating at least 100 round trip trades. So in the second step, we look at the trades that these SECs conducted among themselves, and we further group the trades by the token that was traded and by a time window, for example, one hour. And in fact, we use different time windows in multiple passes to capture different temporal trading patterns. So we start with a set of trades within a particular SEC token and time window, and then for each trader involved in this set of trades, we calculate their individual trading positions as the sum of all assets that each of them bought and sold. And then we uh, go on to check if each of these traders involved in the set of trades holds a position that is close to zero, which basically means that in sum, they have bought and sold the same number of assets, so they end up, uh, well, they end up not changing their market position. But we allow for a small deviation here because they might not trade exactly the same volumes. And well, if this condition is met, we have found uh, a wash trade. And if not, we remove the last trade from the set and then update the positions and check again if the condition is met. So as a consequence, we do not check all subsets of this set of trades, but only n subsets. And for more details about the algorithm, uh, you can check our paper. So here is a brief overview of the data that we have collected and analyzed in our work. 
We have uh, recorded trades on IDEX and Ether Delta from 2017 till May of 2020. And these trade data sets contain several millions of trades. They involve between 200 and 300,000 different trader accounts and several thousands of tokens. And to give you a brief overview of the major, main results that we found, um, we can say that around, we estimate that around 160 million US dollars, or the equivalent of that in tokens, was wash traded during these three years. We can also say that more than 30% of tokens traded on IDEX and more than 40% of those traded on Ether Delta experienced some kind of wash trading. And we estimate that based on these wash trades, the, the, the wash traders incurred more than half a million US dollars in fees paid to these exchanges. We also analyze the patterns in which wash trading takes place. And we can say that the vast majority of wash trades are self trades, but the two account structures are also very popular. More complex structures are rather rare. And if so, they mostly appear on IDEX and not on Ether Delta. And what is also interesting to see here is that the complex structures almost always contain smaller subcycles of length two between just two accounts. And some of these cases are even fully connected. Regarding the wash trading activity over time, um, on the left side, we have uh, the wash trading volume per month as the US dollar equivalent. And on Ether Delta, uh, the majority of the wash trading volume took place between mid 2017 and mid 2018. On IDEX, it started a little later and continued through 2018, declining in, in 2019. And obviously, this falls into a period of great general interest in cryptocurrencies. On the right side, we have the weekly wash volume share. And what is interesting is that IDEX was only launched in late 2017. And we can see that just after it was launched, we have some weeks where almost 100% of the total trading volume on IDEX can be attributed to wash trades. So this might indicate some interest in promoting this exchange when it was still new and unknown. We also looked at the extent to which the tokens that were that can be traded on these exchanges were affected. And we see here on the y-axis the share of all tokens whose trading volume consists to, uh, of at least a certain share of wash trades, um, which is shown on the x-axis. So on IDEX, for 10% of all tokens, we can say that at least 20% of the trading volume consists of wash trades. Also, 1% of all tokens traded on IDEX was almost entirely wash traded, and the same holds for around 10% of all tokens on Ether Delta. This brings us to the conclusion. Um, in summary, this is the first systematic analysis of wash trading on decentralized exchanges, and we've identified significant activity on two limit order book decentralized exchanges. This is especially visible in 2017 and 2018, um, and our numbers are a lower bound estimate. So it's quite possible that there are more wash, traded, wash trades going on that we perhaps didn't identify. Um, in terms of countermeasures, uh, there is obviously self-trade prevention functionality uh, and know your customer procedures that can be introduced. And IDEX uh, claims to have introduced these as well, but interestingly, our data actually shows that there are still, still self-trades even after introducing such prevention functionality. Finally, high fees can make wash trading uh, uneconomical, especially regular Ethereum transaction fees. Our data set uh, is available on Zenodo, and our code uh, is also available on GitHub for reproducibility. Um, and we invite other researchers to also use our data to, for example, as future work, develop improved wash trade detection algorithms. And in terms of other future work, we also think that automated market maker decentralized exchanges uh, are very interesting to, to analyze because they're getting very popular right now. And finally, uh, you may have heard about the recent uh, non-fungible token popularity with uh, yeah, um, art items uh, being sold for very high amounts. Uh, and so it's quite possible that there's also some wash trading going on in this space. These are our references, and uh, this concludes our presentation. Uh, here are our contact details if uh, you have any specific questions. But we're also happy to answer any, any questions you may have during the conference. Thank you very much.